Good morning, viewers, and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show, coming to you here live from the Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. We are just at about 7, 17 a.m., and in this segment, we have the opportunity to chat with Curtis Douglas, president of the All Tobago Fisher Folk Association. And this morning, we're speaking on the issue of the Bayesian and Tobago fishermen. Curtis, good morning to you. Good morning to Tobago and, you know, share the life. Uh, indeed, share the indeed, life. Right, indeed. Share the life. <laughs> I, I can't help but dive in straight on in. Yes. I, I feel as if um, from as early as a few years ago in high school uh, coming through, this seems to not be a new issue to the extent that even when I travel and I'm out there with my colleagues, there is that banter quite naturally in terms of the issue of uh, the cutoff with Barbados, Tobago, etc. Where are we at now in terms of this current situation that has once again um, you know, returned to the forefront as an issue being brought forth by your association? We know better off than how we were five years ago. As a matter of fact, Julian, it, the, the situation has become dire worse because now we are seeing where, as I would have expressed as the old Tobago fisher folk, would have expressed the overfishing in our, in our waters and the lack of revenue that we are being, as Tobago fisher folk are being able to to receive over the last three years, it's really, really gravely dangerous. And we really at a borderline now whereby if, if something is not done immediately, it will drive us to the brink of existing, of getting our, some of our main staples. And also it, it will be a concern for security issue if this shall remain in the direction in, in which it is heading, navigated, by the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. All right. Let, let me let me let me go back to getting a better understanding. Um, in terms of the sea itself, who is responsible? Uh, you know, and I'm being very deliberate here. <laughs> who is responsible for that kind of demarcation? Because it's not like on land where we have a wall that's built. But who is responsible for uh, managing that maritime space out there to help to bring some ease or, or, or defining the situation? Where do you suspect the fundamental issue is rooted in terms of correcting this problem? Correcting this problem is quite easy. The first thing we have to learn to do is get rid of any political affiliation with any party and let's deal with country, All right? One, the teacher is responsible for six nautical miles. So it limits the teacher or the chief secretary what he can do in that aspect. Two, the prime minister is basically, not the president said I said, but the prime minister is who conduct the day-to-day -day business in the country. So he has, and the cabinet, so they have responsible. Res they are responsible for the the economic zone of Trinidad and Tobago. One, they have defined Tobago to a, a mega uh, a distance of six nautical miles, and anything outside of six nautical miles is Trinidad. Is no longer Tobago. So a lot of people been a lot of people been been going out in sea and and catching fish and believe that they're in Tobago waters. Quite honestly, on paper. That is Trinidad. It was explained and expressed because they have defined Tobago, but they have not defined Trinidad. So you find all of these oil wells and stuff like that, they are saying it's Trinidad when it really is Tobago because there's no definition of Trinidad, but there's a definition of Trinidad and Tobago. So basically, when we speak about um, boundaries, we are talking about Trinidad and Tobago because we are one country. Tobago is an island part, island that develops to make it one country. But the decisions that are made for Tobagonian, the major decisions are made in Trinidad. Hence the reason why I would have heard Mr. Chavez and Mr. Trevor James, I, Mr. Trevor James is asking for autonomy. And I think that will give Tobago law once they get law, they could make a law in Tobago, then we can study now to define some of these issues that we have in. Because quite frankly, Sir Julian, we don't even have a Coast Guard boat in Tobago that is working. The police boat that we have is in all the police boats park up in Trinidad. So Tobago is just an open space, and yet still we have people making decisions for Tobago for Tobago in Trinidad. Now the listening public, this is not attack, this is to safeguard ourselves, right? Trinidad, as we know it, 
as I said, I although I would have defined Trinidad and Tobago, but the fact is Trinidad do not have flying fish, right? Secondly, Barbados do not have flying fish. All the revenue and the flying fish come from Tobago. It's a Tobago issue. And when we have Trinidadians making decisions for Tobagonians, that is very scary because it does not affect them, but it will affect us. And I'm saying this, I'm saying this without any apologies. In the next five years, we will not have the pleasure of kingfish, dolphin, tuna, and all this stuff because when they kill out, the flying fish. What would the fish feed on? There is no feed. And if there is no feed, there will be no fish. They will go. They will go directly to Grenada or, or etc. Right? We don't have to go 30 and 35 miles just to, to have a yield. So you can imagine, because I was saying eight years, and the fisher folks and me saying, Mr. Douglas, no, it is not eight years. It is less than that. It is right now, is the straw that will break the camel back. And what we would have done to see how best we could massage the situation and sort of like oil line the situation, we decided was to write a letter to the Prime Minister. We wrote a letter to the Prime Minister on the 12th of April, and we would also convey that information to Misham Fakodjo and Anne Webster. And none of them have Tobago representative have replied. None of them have replied to say, hey, we were elected to represent the people of Tobago East and Tobago West, right? None have replied. None have replied. The only person that tried to set up a, a meeting with his hands tied was the chief secretary. That was the only person. But in terms of representing, we have issued these letters to these people, and none of them replied. We even go so far to even realize, hey, nobody replied to us. We replied, to, we sent to the, the opposition leader, no reply, right? But the onus is based on the East Tobago East and the Tobago West. They are sitting down joint pay. And Tobago is a brink of this of, of a decision, um, a, um, eliminating the fishing industry, the fish, and nobody's saying anything. Julian, make no mistake. By the end of this week, Tobago people will talk and we will speak in the manner in which we ought to. And make no mistake as well. As I said. This has, is pushing in the direction to become a security issue whereby Tobago have to fight for survival because there is no, there is no correspondent, no, 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 no working relationship because of what? This, when, you, when, when a prime minister and a minister get in the office without favor, but we are seeing favor here, so, so I, I want to get uh, from you, you know, and I'm, and I'm getting it clearly. You raised a number of issues there in terms of security concerns, the need for greater autonomy, and certainly reaching out to central government by way of the prime minister as well as the uh, the two members of parliament for yes. Tobago. Um, what is anticipated, uh, you know, in terms of the next step? Because what is clear is that we've got to find a solution. Uh, ultimately, what I'm gathering is we continue to have the risk out there um, as it relates to when there really might be collisions between Barbados and Tobago um, meeting up on the outside. But more than that, the issue that you've raised in relation to overfishing, which therefore creates a situation where our very own uh, Tobago fishermen are not able to derive the kind of benefits from our waters. Under those circumstances, as I mentioned to you before, uh, this is not a new issue. Mm -hmm. um, where, what are you hopeful of in, in, in relation to either a response that comes through central government um, with a firm sense of direction and or is there a you know, follow-up course of action that you'd be required to take? Um, I think Tobago and I are very peaceful. We are very quiet. We don't believe in, I, 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 we, don't, we don't like tires and, and cut trees. But the old Tobago fisher folk, along with all the fisher folks in Tobago, are, are gathering. We are gathering numbers to have a evasive action to let our voice be heard. Because if it cannot be done in a peaceful manner, in the terms of you do not want to, 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 to deal with us, there is United, there is the United Nations. There are people that we are willing to reach out to in a very educated and very innovative manner. We don't believe in carrying on and, you know, and violence because we are not violent by nature. I think we are very intelligent, as you can see, 
um, we would, would have display to Begonians in high office in this in this country and contribution to this island and development of the the country. So we know uh, before the end of the week, you will be informed about what is our next action and what we're going to do. And to we just don't want to action. We want to explain what what we what we expect. We expect we expect the prime minister or the, the, the cabinet, because you're not hearing about this in parliament. You're not going to hear about anything about Tobago in parliament. So we have to do what we have to do for Tobagoans, right? So the, we expected to have a conversation. It first starts with the conversation. And then we have a team that delegated from Tobago and Barbados, and we must have that discussion in the terms of navigating the way forward, in the method in which they are using that is creating great harm for and threat to our survival and our, our food security. And what we, we intend to, what method we intend to use now to preserve and also to help that Tobagonians could be able to reap the benefit of the natural resources. And also Barbados should be able to reap the natural resources because the flying fish is a symbol of symbol of, of the nationality, who they represent and etc. Like how, you know, they say crab and dumpling is Tobago, right? Yes. So we have no problem in working through, you know, building a greater CARICOM, but we would not sit by and be advantaged upon how, as how we've been advantaged by for years that been taking place. We believe it time has come for us to say, hey, stop, let's sit down and revisit the terms and condition in which you all come and participate in our natural mineral so that we all as Tobago and Bajan could be able to survive and have sustainable food security for all. Because the present, the present arrangement or the present method in which they are using is not sustainable and is not cost effective for no one, but is dangerous for especially the people in Tobago. What do you say to those looking on uh, that make the comment? Well, I gave my fish um, anyway, so I'm not sure what the real issue is. How do, how do you respond to that? What's the kind of long-term impact if things do not improve um, going forward with this issue? I, uh, Mr. Julian, when when um, the borders was open and the Tobago fisher folk was observing that there was a lot of illegal trade where, where we believe we believe or we assume that illegal stuff was coming into Tobago. We came and we were warning the Tobagoans, we warning the people in charge. Now we're seeing a lot of gun crimes in Tobago. When things are happening, people play a deaf ear to it and say, well, hey, nobody ain't shoot me. I ain't waiting for nobody to shoot me to understand that there's a gun issue and there's a crime issue in Tobago. We are trying to prevent that. Julian, trade is starting to happen with the Bajans, right? With, with certain things alcohol. What next? We don't know what to happen. We have to stop that. They're getting fish today. Look at the size of fish that you're getting. Look at the size of dolphin that is coming. Well, last you would have seen black eye kingfish in abundance. There is, there is a depletion in the, in, the, in the catches that we're going. We, we used to go five miles, Julian, could I go and take a run and go lucky to catch a big snapper. No, you have to go further, right? So we are saying that it is our food security is under threat. But as to Begonian, we have to take the necessary precaution to ensure that our kids, our kids and grandkids will be able to partake in, in some of our natural tradition, which is our food-based security, which is the kingfish and the dolphin and the tuna. Now you're seeing what happened? They're catching the same tuna and give it to us in tins. We ought to start to prepare ourselves for food security in this country. So when, pe when a person says, oh, I'm getting me kingfish and dolphin, in what quantity? And look at the price that you are paying for the, 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 the same thing you used to pay $10 and $15 for now. Look at it. I know everything is going up in the cost of price, but we have to learn to take precaution. You know the old people that say, prevention better than cure. cure. And to answer some of that question, not same time green bush drop of water, it is rotten. Remember that. Take time, no lazy. But we have to work with the science and also our experience. 
in for, the for, for the benefit of our international viewers. Correct. Uh, you know, with green bush dropping in water, it, it simply means you will only sometimes see the effect down the, the road. road. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's really an interesting perspective that you're bringing forth here, uh, notwithstanding your responsibility in the first instance uh, as a fisher folk, mm -hmm. but also looking at what are some, certainly some broader um, Tobago conversations, yes. Trinidad and Tobago conversations, the issue of autonomy, the security issue that is affecting us and so on. But we're just out of time, so we got to, uh, we got to leave it there uh, for this morning. But most certainly, very strong uh, position being taken here by the All Tobago Official Folk Association, and we, we certainly will be keeping in touch uh, with the happenings as we go on into this week. This is a call, a call to the Prime Minister, a call to uh, those at the level of central government. Uh, let's uh, give the necessary responses, even if it is to sit down by start, starting with a conversation uh, intended to ensure that Tobago benefits accordingly, especially coming out of these circumstances. Thank you very much, Curtis Douglas, for joining us here on set, uh, bringing updates to us on the issue of the Bayesian and the Tobago fishermen connection. Viewers, we want to thank you so much for continuing to choose the Tobago Updates morning show. At this point, we're preparing to uh, head on over. We will be connecting in our next segment with Hanif Benjamin as we discuss treating with violence and school children. All right, viewers, and at this point, let me invite Curtis to join in with me since he has done so well and to remind our viewers that this is your opportunity to share the live, share the live, share the live. Share the live. <laughs>